A bug hunter named Ryan Pickering found one of the craziest universal cross-site scripting attacks of recent history, which affected all versions of Safari running on macOS. This allows an attacker full access to any arbitrary website you've ever visited within your browser. This includes website permissions, cookies, and the ability to execute arbitrary JavaScript within the website's context. For example, if you went to zoom.com and granted the camera permission, even years ago, the attacker would be able to turn on your webcam. If you went to iCloud.com and previously logged in, and your session is still active, the attacker would be able to view all of your photos. And if you went to maps.google.com and granted the location permission, again, even if this was years ago, the attacker would then be able to have access to your location. The thing is, this attack works on any arbitrary website, which is what makes it a universal cross-site scripting attack. Due to the severity of this attack, Apple rewarded Ryan with a $100,500 bounty. I'm going to be covering the process that Ryan published in his official bug report, so if you're interested in learning more, I'll leave the link below. You know how you can right-click on any website and download the website to your computer locally? Normally, this will download a .html file, along with all of the JavaScript and other media, essentially letting you load the website offline. However, if you do this within Safari on a Mac computer, it will actually default to a .webarchive file type instead. This is a type of file that was created by Safari as an alternative to HTML files. If we take a look inside a .webarchive file, we'll see two things of note. First of all, any JavaScript that is running on the website will be included inside of the webarchive file, which is expected since a webarchive file is meant to save the entire website, including any JavaScript and other media. However, there's something else that stands out. A web origin is also specified within this file. This is actually a neat trick that lets Safari rebuild the context of the saved website. For example, if you granted the camera permission to a website that you would then decide to download, let's say google.com, when you open the web archive, the camera permission would already be active, since the saved website would be running as the google.com origin, as if you were on the real, live google.com. This also means that the JavaScript defined here will run within this context, and have access to the website's cookies and other site data. If the attacker could somehow modify this file, they could place arbitrary JavaScript here, and modify this URL to any arbitrary website, and achieve a universal cross-site scripting attack by design, allowing them to run JavaScript within the context of any website. This was actually pointed out in 2013, however Apple wasn't too concerned. Seeing the power of web archive files, the bug hunter decided to devise a plan. This attack can be broken down into two steps. Step 1. Forcefully download a malicious web archive file onto the victim's machine. This would not be the web archive created by Safari when the user goes through the Safari UI, but rather a malicious web archive file created by the attacker and served as a download through an attacker-ran website. Once this file is downloaded on the victim's machine, the attacker would then need to find a way to forcefully open this file on the victim's machine without requiring permission from the user. If they could somehow forcefully download and forcefully open a web archive file on the victim's machine, they could successfully achieve a universal cross-site scripting attack. Step 1 is going to be quite difficult, since beginning with Safari 13 back in 2019, Safari now prompts the user if a website tries to download a file. Step 2 is also going to be incredibly difficult, since even if the attacker was somehow able to download and open a web archive file on the victim's machine, the opening of this file would actually be blocked by macOS Gatekeeper. Web archive files that were created by random websites and served as file downloads, rather than officially downloaded through Safari's UI, are now blocked from being opened. With all of this standing in our way, let's take a step back and see how this bug hunter was able to make this incredible attack work. Let's take a step back for a second and talk about URIs and deep linking. We all know that normal website URLs are prefixed with HTTPS colon slash slash, which the operating system knows to open in a web browser. However, there's a concept of URIs, which not only open another app on your device, but link to specific content within that app. This is known as deep linking. For example, if an app or website were to open this URI, beginning with maps colon slash slash, it would actually open the native maps application on the map and search for the Golden Gate Bridge. 
Alternatively, if a website tried to open this URI, beginning with FaceTime audio colon slash slash, it would open the native FaceTime application and initiate a FaceTime call with somebody. URI schemes are nothing new and are widely used for both native apps and third party apps. We can even see that in my own app that I just published, when I click on the App Store icon, it links to my specific listing within the native App Store application. Now, URIs have been used for malicious purposes too. As a response, all modern versions of Safari warn the user before launching other applications. However, it was identified in a Black Hat presentation back in 2020 that Apple did define some hard-coded exceptions that don't bring up a prompt. It turns out that all URI schemes are registered with launch services and can all be listed by running this command. After digging through the list of URIs and cross-referencing them with the list of trusted URIs that won't bring up a prompt, the bug hunter found this one, called iCloud-Sharing, that looked interesting. This URI is registered to an iCloud sharing application called ShareBear. Let's talk about iCloud file sharing for a second. If a user goes to a file and clicks on the share button for any file within macOS, they will be presented with this menu. One of the options is called copy link. If the user clicks on this, iCloud will generate a link that looks something like this. If you open this link in your browser, it will simply display the file within iCloud Drive on the web. However, the bug hunter realized that if they simply replace HTTPS colon slash slash with iCloud dash sharing colon slash slash, rather than Safari opening the file in the browser, it would actually open the ShareBear application on the user's Mac. Let's take a deeper look into this. Let's say the attacker creates a PNG file on their local machine, and then generates an iCloud sharing link for this PNG file, and then swaps out the HTTPS colon slash slash for iCloud dash sharing colon slash slash. If the attacker were to host their own website, they could actually use JavaScript to open this URI, and when a victim visits this website, it would result in ShareBear being opened on the victim's computer. Once this happens, there is some logic. If the user never opened the file before, ShareBear will prompt the user before opening the file. If this prompt was already accepted previously for this specific file, ShareBear will open the file right away without any user interaction. Once the file is opened, it will be opened in the native app on the Mac for the file type. For example, if the file was a PNG image, it would just be opened using the default Photos app on the Mac. This prompt here displays the file name and file extension, so if he downloaded a PNG, it would let the user know that it is attempting to open a PNG. The thing is, when the user clicks on open, they are agreeing to a lot more than just opening a PNG. Once the user clicks on open, the file will be downloaded onto their machine at this location, and then automatically opened. The user will now never see a prompt again for any subsequent times that they open this specific file. The big issue here is how this unique file is defined. It's not the file name and extension, or the byte content of the file. It's actually defined as a file downloaded from this specific URI using this iCloud sharing link. Let's be clear. If the attacker that owns this PNG file, that originally generated the sharing link, decides to completely modify the byte content and file extension of the file on their local machine, let's say from a PNG to an evil, executable binary, the share link will actually remain the same. In fact, once the file is modified, ShareBear will actually take care of updating the file automatically on the victim's machine with no prompts at all. Here, we can see the attacker modifying the contents of a file that they shared, and automatically, the file updates from a PNG to an EXE on the victim's machine without their knowledge. What's even worse is that the next time the attacker-ran website tries to open this URI, since it is technically the same URI with the same share link, the victim's machine will not give the user a prompt, since they previously accepted the prompt back when the file was a PNG. It will immediately be launched, remotely, by the attacker, with no further prompts or notice given to the victim. This is what we would call a polymorphic file, which the victim unknowingly agreed to plant on their machine. 
you might think that this universal cross-site scripting attack is quite easy to pull off now. The attacker just needs to get the user to agree to open a PNG that they download, and then later change the PNG to a maliciously crafted web archive file, and then force open it. However, things won't be this easy. If the attacker tries this, once the web archive file is opened, macOS Gatekeeper would stop this from happening and display this prompt to the user since .web archive files in specific, among other file types such as exes, are unable to be opened unless they are published by known developers. Well, we're close. Let's see what the bug hunter did to get around this. While we can't launch web archives or EXEs, we can still use URIs to open existing, approved apps on the victim's machine. It turns out that there's a specific type of file, called the Windows URL file, that uses the .url file extension. This file essentially functions as a shortcut, opening the browser, and then directing to a URL defined inside of the .url file. In this case, rather than trying to force open a .web archive file, the attacker can simply force open one of these .url files, which prompts Safari to open, and then once Safari is open, loads in the path to a web archive file that was previously planted on the victim's machine. Since Safari is a native, approved app, Mac OS Gatekeeper has no issue with this, and Safari will be launched without any user interaction. This is a nice and simple workaround to be able to open web archive files indirectly. There's only one issue with this approach. We need to know the path to the web archive file. We know that we can plant a web archive file on the victim's machine with ShareBearer. However, it will be stored in this directory, which unfortunately for the attacker, contains the username of the victim, which is unknown to the attacker. We were so close, but yet again, face another hurdle. The bug hunter was able to get around this by instead launching a .dmg file on the victim's machine. When a DMG file is opened, it gets mounted as a virtual volume within the Mac's file system. In this case, the attacker will place their maliciously crafted web archive file inside of a DMG file. When they launch the DMG file on the victim's machine, it will mount the web archive file inside of the slash volumes directory on the victim's Mac. We can see the bug hunter performing a proof of concept of this. The website simply runs the iCloud sharing URI, and since the user already accepted the prompt before, the DMG file gets automatically opened, which mounts the included web archive file into the slash volumes directory on the victim's machine. This way, the attacker knows the path to the web archive file, which simply begins with slash volumes. This is actually an incredible trick. The attacker can now change the polymorphic planted file for a second time to the .url file that we discussed earlier, and can now use the exact path to the web archive file that was just planted in the slash volumes directory on the victim's machine. This is such a beautiful attack. Let's go ahead and review the entire chain. At first, a victim comes on to an attacker-ran website and downloads a PNG. The user will see the prompt to open a PNG file, and since this is what they expect, they will open it. Now, the attacker turns the PNG file into a DMG file containing a maliciously crafted web archive file, and launches it on the victim's machine without any prompt. This plants the web archive file into the slash volumes directory on the victim's machine. Now, the attacker takes advantage of the polymorphic file once again, and turns it into a URL file, with the URL set to the path of the planted web archive file. Now, when the URL file is launched, it will open Safari to the web archive that was previously planted. As we now know, since this was a maliciously crafted web archive file, the attacker would have been able to set the domain to any arbitrary domain, and include any arbitrary JavaScript to be executed within that domain's context, having access to site permissions, cookies, and more. Since the polymorphic file needs to be changed twice in quick succession during this attack, the bug hunter showcased a proof of concept where they simply used a shared folder containing both the DMG file and the URL file as hidden files instead. In their proof of concept, they set the domain in the web archive to iCloud.com and were able to exfiltrate the victim's iOS camera role, but of course, this is a universal cross-site scripting attack, meaning they could have subbed in any arbitrary domain and gained access to any arbitrary set of permissions and data. In summary, this is one of the most brilliant, yet straightforward attacks I've seen in a while. Once again, huge congrats to Ryan Pickren for pulling this off. 
If you made it this far, you might be interested in checking out some of my other content. And as always, thanks for watching.